Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost to the Cathedral, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our service this morning on Monday, July 5th. On this day, we transfer the celebration in morning prayer of Independence Day. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for Independence Day. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture for today is taken from Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. In a country established with the separation between church and state, one might ask, what has the church got to say or to do with a secular holiday like Independence Day? Well, I think if we delve a little more deeply into it, actually, the church has a lot to say. If we look even from our earliest beginnings with the Declaration of Independence, with the Pledge of Allegiance, with currency that says, in God we trust, we'll see the deep connections to God even from our early foundings. In the Declaration of Independence, you'll recall that it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are powerful words, words that we hold tight and dear to connect us to God our Creator. But what does it say when some of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were slave owners, all men, not just some, are created equal and under God have certain unalienable rights, including freedom. There's something about freedom and equality that cause us to delve a little more deeply into this Independence Day that we celebrate. I think if I were to ask most people if they had one word that they associated with Independence Day, what that word would be, I think many people would respond, freedom freedom from England at that time for our own nation. But let's look at that a little more deeply. And I'm indebted to the work of Richard Baucom, who in his book, God and the Crisis of Freedom, draws it back 
to the biblical narrative in the Israelites being freed from bondage in Egypt. It wasn't just a get out of jail free card. Yes, they were freed from bondage, but freed for praising God and serving one another. Go back to that text from Deuteronomy, which I read earlier. It is about freedom to worship God, to serve God, to serve our neighbor. Freedom from bondage, freedom for or in order to praise, worship, serve. Bauckham has written that in contemporary times, freedom is seen, quote, exclusively as the emancipation of the individual from all constraints and as unlimited freedom of choice, end quote. We've heard those refrains about freedom and rights in order to do what you please. It's always in the context of our beloved community, is it not? Loving God and loving our neighbor. The freedom and the responsibility to do that. So on this Independence Day, transferred one day, yes, celebrate our freedom. But remember, it's not just about us as individuals or even us as a nation. It is about God and we, the beloved community. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Amen. And now please join me in the prayer our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>